Now, as you know, I uh, actually spend a lot of my time out in the community speaking with groups large and small about the future of Calgary. Uh, and for that reason, sometimes it may feel like uh, I'm always out talking to people. And, and I see a lot of great leaders in the audience today, a lot of people who do a lot of good work for the city who seem to follow me around to these things. So you may hear stuff that you've heard before. That doesn't denigrate the importance, I think, of why I think it's important to come and speak to this Rotary Club and to spend time with you uh, every year. And <coughs> excuse me, the reason, of course, that that is so important is because you represent so much of what is good and what is great about this community, so much of what we are trying to encourage people to do within the community. Towards the end of my remarks today, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of homework. And you might laugh um, at the homework that I give you because for many of you, for almost all of you, you're doing it already. Um, but I think that it's helpful for us to have a conversation about how, of course, we can do even more. So let's talk for a moment about Ron Esch, shall we? He thought that he was retired and that he would have a nice life of leisure. And uh, now what I understand is you've taken on the role as chairing just that, that tiny, tiny little event, right, that um, brings in $300,000 a year uh, for the Rotary Club. And the other thing is that Ron Esch... Um, after taking, making the mistake of answering the phone when I called, uh, he agreed to join our tax and advisory committee. Uh, so thank you very much for doing that. Uh, we're thrilled that you are great skills and assets to the betterment of the community, as are so many other people in the room. I'm just picking you up because you're sitting right there. So thank you uh, for doing that. And I know that as this particular Rotary Club moves, towards your centennial year in 2014, you will do even more. And that really is one of the places where I want to begin. So what is the state of the city? Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you, the state of the city is frigid. <laughs> very, very, very cold. And it's difficult to think uh, about other things when we're dealing with this cold, but the state of the city is also very, very strong. And I am incredibly about 2012. 2012 will, in fact, be the year of Calgary in so many ways. You may recall when I spoke with you last year, I talked to you about one of the big surprises of my first couple of months in office. And that big surprise was the sheer number of centennial events that I have to attend. You know, everyone, is everyone I thought then was celebrating their anniversary from the centennial of Calgary's Chinatown to the centennial of the City of Calgary Parks Department, Mount Royal University, the YWCA, the list goes on. And 2012 is also a year of great 100th anniversaries. The 100th anniversary of the Post Theatres, the 100th anniversary of the Grand, the 100th anniversary of a couple of great institutions, the City of Calgary Recreation Department and the Calgary Public Library, and of course the 100th anniversary of that little event some of you may have heard of that we Calgary Stampede. Calgary has been named Canada's cultural capital for 2012. And we have a remarkable opportunity in 2012 to really be able to show the city, the country, and the world who we are and what we do. A year ago, I mentioned to you that I was interested in thinking about the people of 1911 and 1912 and why they were building for their future. They were building the community. They weren't building for the city they were, a city of $40,000, uh, 40,000 people, I should say, on the Canadian prairie. But they were building for what they wanted to be. They had their faces turned firmly towards the future. And you know what? We have that same sense right now. I was recently, just this last weekend, at the opening of the Genesis Center for Community Wellness in Northeast Calgary. A public library, a branch of the YMCA, a gym for community use, a for social services and community services, and a place most important where the community can come together, where the community can be together and live together and breathe together, and understand who we are as neighbors, who we are as Calgarians. And that is so incredibly important. And I was thinking at that time, I'm here at the ribbon cutting, and 100 years from now, a future mayor will be standing here at the centennial talking about what were the people in 2012 thinking when they were this stuff. 
And I've realized that that is precisely what we need to be doing over what will, in fact, be a great year. <laughs> Since I have a podium, I'll also give you a shameless plug. I also get to celebrate a personal milestone. Um, a big birthday for me coming up in a couple of years, a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks. And I uh, wish it was a couple of years from now. Ugh. A little nervous about that first digit changing. But um, inspired by great Calgarian leaders and philanthropists, uh, particularly W. Bert Wilson, I've decided to use the occasion of my 40th birthday as an opportunity to kick off some initiatives for the city of Calgary. And I have, in fact, Eva Friesen knows this, set up a new fund at the Calgary Foundation uh, to focus on issues that I think are particularly important to our community's future, immigrant youth, the arts and culture in Calgary, and on poverty. So you will have an opportunity to help me blow up the candles in a couple of weeks and help us kickstart uh, that initiative through the great, good, uh, the great good graces of the Calgary Foundation. So I'm very, very excited about the opportunity to do that. Now, 2012 may be a year where I get old, but it is also going to be a terrific year for Calgary. And you may have seen just last week... Conference Board of Canada's report on the growth of cities, where they indicate that their prediction is that Calgary will buck the national trend and lead the country in economic growth. Uh, growth of 3 to 4% GDP uh, per annum over the next couple of years. And in some ways that they believe that Calgary will disassociate itself from much of the national economy and continue to grow and continue to be prosperous. Which goes to prove what, I've, what we've been saying for some time here in the city, which is that Calgary is Canada's economic driver. Our industry, our innovation, our entrepreneurship is in fact making this country work and we need to be <coughs> excuse me poised not only to deliver on that but also to make sure that we manage and handle that growth well at the community level because as you all know thank you how many of you have this chest cold that's going around <laughs> two weeks oh. <laughs> So we know that with growth comes some challenge. And we know that during the last boom, in some ways we managed it very, very well. In some ways we got ourselves caught on our heels a little bit, um, managing the growth during that boom. And it's important for us to get ahead of that. It's important for us to make sure that we have the right infrastructure, the right housing, the right services in place so that we're not caught in a future crunch. And fortunately, we are working hard on doing that. <coughs> we need to make sure that we're not repeating any mistakes in the past. There's good news here. You know, I was, um, just last week, speaking to a group of about 700 people who are in the development industry, home builders and developers. And I said at that time, you know, what is remarkable about the journey we're on is that when you talk to people about the kind of community that they want, what kinds of neighborhoods they want to live in, what kind of a city they want to live in, what they want this city to be, the remarkable thing about those conversations is that everyone wants the same thing. Everyone talks about the same kinds of communities, the same kind of city. And these are not complex things. I want to live in a neighborhood where my kids can walk to school. I want to live in a neighborhood where I can walk to the store. I want to live in a neighborhood where my parents can live in the same neighborhood and keep an eye on my kids when I need them and my grandparents can be close by. I want to live in a neighborhood where it's not too far for me to go to work. I want to live in a neighborhood where that second or third or fourth family vehicle is a choice for my family, not an absolute necessity for me to want to live, to, for be, to be able to live in this city. I want to live in a city that welcomes people from around the world, that welcomes investment and business from around the world, that makes sure that it understands that it is truly a global city. I want to live in a healthy city. I want to live in a safe city. I want to live in a place where there are opportunities to do the things that make life worth living. Like arts, like culture, like recreational activities, like intellectual pursuits. I want a city that works. I want a city that provides me the services I need at a cost that's affordable. It's pretty straightforward stuff. So we have to ask ourselves then, what are the barriers what are the things that get in the way of our being able to build those city that we all need and want so very badly? And that's really what we've been working on very hard at City Hall, but also within the community, for people to start really thinking about this. You know, I wrote in the Herald this weekend, they asked me for a vision of Calgary neighborhoods 30 years hence, and I wrote something that was quite similar to what I just said. And I also then wrote, does that 
like utopia? Maybe. Maybe we can't get there. But that never, never, never absolves us of the absolute requirement to move in that direction and to try. And to make sure that every decision we're making, every single day, no matter how small it seems, is moving us further in that direction. We have to do it. It's not a choice for us. In order to maintain sustainability, financial, social, environmental, for future generations, we have to be able to move towards that. And we have to work together to make that happen. So over the course of the next year, we'll have a number of priorities. You know, in 2011, as you heard from Madeline, there was a long, long list of things that I'm very, very pleased that we were able to accomplish. Not all of them were uncontroversial. But I do think that every one of them was the right decision to make in order to move us in the direction that we need to move. And on a personal level, when I stood here a year ago, I told you about the 12 better ideas that we had been able to move forward on, that we wanted to be able to move forward on at that time. And I'm pleased to report to you that of those 12, we made significant progress on 10, a fair bit of progress on number 11. That's the issue of secondary suites, which you may recall was the main thrust of what we talked about a year ago. We're not quite there yet, but I want to make sure, the reason I mention it is I want to thank all of you for your advocacy. I want to thank all of you for standing up for what was right for the city and making sure that you continue to advocate on that. And you know something? We'll get there. We'll get there slowly, but we will get there. And number, number 12, by the way, is something the provincial government has to do. It has to do with campaign finance reform. Um, but I understand from our new premier that this is an interesting and important area of, of emphasis for them. So we may get to 12 out of 12. So the work's done. I can go home now. <laughs> it was a great year. Thanks so much. <laughs> Didn't the previous mayor use this podium to make an announcement like that? No. Um, <laughs> that is not what we're talking about. In fact, we have a lot of work left to do. And I want to tell you a little bit about four key things that I would like to be working on over the course of the next year. The first Madeline alluded to, and that is the Calgary Poverty Reduction Initiative. Uh, this is uh, something I'm really excited about. We announced the leadership of that just last week, co-chaired by two amazing Calgarians, Steve Allen, um, and all of you, um, as well as Kathy Williams, another name probably familiar to most of you. We've hired a terrific executive director, and more important, we have a stewardship group made up of people across the community, private sector, public sector, nonprofit sector, to come together and ask a very simple question. Why is it that with all the interventions that we've done with all the great stories of success that government and nonprofit agencies could point to in terms of helping individuals and families get out of poverty, why is the rates of poverty in the community have not changed? Why is it the child poverty in particular remains stubbornly high? What is it the system that isn't working? So that's the simple question. <coughs> I'm a simple guy. And so the process too is very simple which is get a bunch of really, really smart people together and say, answer that question. And spend some time away from your daily job, your daily grind. They're all volunteers, but they're going to commit some serious time to just think about that and to see if there's an idea out there that tells us, that shows us a new path forward, that helps us understand. Because we all know that when anyone in our community is poor, our community is poor. That our community is not working for everyone within it. And it's important for us to think about whether that can change. Is that just a fact of life? Is that humanity? Is that how cities work? And I refuse to believe that. I believe that we can do a better job. And that's really what the thrust of the Calgary Poverty Reduction is about. And I hope that many of you will be able to participate in its work as it goes forward. Second, it's really time for us to take a much better public transit system and to really spend some time thinking about how transit can serve the needs of the community better than it does now. Now, we do have a good transit system. And in fact, in many measures, that transit system is extraordinary. Did you know, for example, for people who work downtown, our modal split is approximately 20% of people walk or cycle, 30% of people drive, 50% of people take public transit. So that was our goal in, in Calgary, you know, where we love our cars, right? And that was our goal, actually, here now. I'm very, very pleased to see that that is happening. 
And we have made a number of improvements to the customer service model at Calgary Transit. Uh, for example, we instituted two direct transit routes to the airport, which had never been done before. It's a bit weird. Um, one from the Northeast Sea Train and one from downtown. If you haven't taken the number 300 from downtown, I encourage you to do it. It's fantastic. Um, from downtown, regular fare to the airport, uh, half an hour from City Hall to the airport. Uh, it is a terrific, terrific thing. Uh, the Route 1, there's commuters who work at the airport from McKnight West. Equally fantastic. Uh, we have um, something called the Calgary where transit is now for the first time bringing customers in in a formal way to help understand their needs. It's really funny. I had someone in the media ask me a question um, which said, why in the world do you need to talk to customers? We know what they want. Better, faster, more convenient service. And I said, no, you've never worked in the private sector, have you? <laughs> you know, I used to work um, for a very, very famous lingerie company. I know a lot of things that no man should know. <laughs> but... Um, but I will tell you that if that very, very famous lingerie company said, well, we know women need bras that fit, but, so we don't need to talk to the customer anymore, I don't think that uh, they would be a particularly famous lingerie company. And I think that these are the things that we need to continue to work on. Um, council um, has made an investment to increase and improve service. Of course, we'll be opening the West LRT, the m most significant transit uh, investment in more than a generation. In fact, the single most... Uh, single largest public investment of any project in Calgary's history, uh, and that'll be opening next year, um, at the very beginning of next year. And we will be offering people new ways to pay. You know, this year we took a very, very, very bold step into the 1970s, and um, it is true the vending machines now give change. Um, very excited about that. Um, we went a step further and took a bold step into the 1990s. They now take credit cards and debit cards too. Um, and we may make it into the 2000s in June with the launch of the Connect card, uh, which will be a, a fair payment proj um, product that you can use and reload at home and not have to worry about carrying change and so on. These things really matter. The signs that tell you the time the next train is coming in real time really matter. Because these are the sorts of things that really focus on getting people from A to B, making the process of taking transit much more convenient. So I'm excited about that. But there is a lot more to do. There's a lot more to do. Um, and in 2012, our big focus will be on really creating a long-term plan for the development of Calgary Transit so that we're, creating, we're building transit in a thoughtful and systematic way while improving customer service. It was quite shocking to me uh, when I started that really there is no unified long-term plan for transit in the city. Uh, it is fair to say that it's been reactive and ad hoc. Money is available from the federal and provincial government. We kind of go, oh, let's build that line. Uh, and this is very challenging. You know, the previous council um, approved two major extension train weren't in Calgary Transit's 25-year plan. And this is not how to build the system. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to having a thoughtful, prioritized capital plan that we can use as our tool to get more funding, as well as an operating plan and a customer service plan. And I'm really excited about that. Moving on from transit, number three is we need to build our city better. And we need time really thinking about how we close the gap between our vision for the future growth of the city and the decisions that we make every day. I'm really pleased, as Madeline mentioned, that in 2011 we reached a negotiated settlement with the development industry that moved closer to new development covering the cost of growth. Now, I would have moved more quickly. I would have been a little bit more aggressive with the numbers. Um, but I think that it's, we're moving in the right direction. No longer are we saying that every taxpayer, or more correctly, every taxpayer's grandchild should have to pay the cost of suburban development in the city. Um, $1.5 billion in debt on the waterworks, uh, water and wastewater utility is quite enough, thank you very much. And we have to move to a world where, in fact, growth is starting to pay for itself. So I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about something that sounds very dry, but is incredibly important, which is the growth management framework that Council recently endorsed. And what that means is that we will be able to decide in an open, transparent, rational, and fair way how the city grows. Removing ad hoc decisions about suburban growth and um, redevelopment of existing neighborhoods from the system, and being more thoughtful. 
in a big way. And we've done a bunch of little things that I think that have made a big difference around the idea of cutting red tape. For example, if you want to build a duplex in an established neighborhood, we've taken you days to get an approval to a system 20 days to get approval. Um, we moved um, many of our services online, again, bold steps um, into the 1990s, um, but we're getting there. So I'll give you an example. In the middle of our heated budget debates, we launched a little program called E-Trades, uh, which allows people, plumbers, electricians, folks like that, to apply for their permits online instead of having to come to City Hall. Now, that was launched just by coincidence right in the middle of our budget debates. So it received a grand total of zero press attention. Um, no one covered it. No one really talked about it. By the end of the first week, 87% of all applications and move to the online system. That's people who are not having to stand in line on the third floor of City Hall. Um, little things like that make a huge difference and I'm really, really pleased that we've been able to do that and a lot more of that will be rolling out over the course of 2012. But 2012 is also our opportunity to do more. We need to revamp our planning and development processes. We need to facilitate good, smart growth. In short, we need it to make it easier to build good stuff. Um, and we've got to figure out how to do this. The last time we did it, it took six years. And arguably, didn't make a big difference. In some ways, made it a little worse. And so, again, we need to learn from the past. Our process will be short, but it'll take time. And we have to move forward in terms of making this stuff work. So in the coming months, you will hear about a major consultation process with industry, the city, and the community to identify the issues with our system and the right solutions to fix them. Um, it sounds like a lot of navel-gazing. But it's incredibly important. It's incredibly important that we get the system right in order to sustain our growth going forward. Planning for all this growth also needs, means we need to make very smart investments in infrastructure. I am very pleased, again, Madeline alluded to it, that Council this year agreed to create the Community Investment Fund. For the first time ever, we have a dedicated, predictable, stable source of funding to build the infrastructure in areas where it's so badly needed in our city and to maintain existing infrastructure. Those are areas like parks, recreation facilities, fire halls, and libraries. Uh, the Community Investment Fund um, will both fund new programs like the Central Library as well as much, much needed repair and refurbishment uh, of existing facilities, stuff that people use every day, the stuff that makes life worth living. And I'm very, very, very pleased that Council made that decision. And I think that Calgarians are pleased about that as well. Um, building other major infrastructure is incredibly important. I maintain, continue to maintain, will always maintain. The completion of airport trail is exactly what we needed to do. We were able to do it in a way that did not impact your property tax, but also future-proofed us. It gives us the ability someday to link the airport to the rest of the LRT system, and it saves us money in the long term, because what we knew, the first question I asked when I was elected about airport trail was, what will it cost us if we And we know that building all the roads around would have cost the city more than building the east-west connector through the north of the city through airport trail. So I'm very, very pleased that we did that as well, because these are the kinds of things that really help us get ready for the future. We've still got work to do in 2012. One of the most frustrating parts of my job so far, of my tenure so far, was the announcement in late November from the federal government that they were reneging on a previously agreed to commitment to help us build four rec centers um, across Calgary. This morning, I had some students, some grade six students from Southeast Calgary in my office. And they asked me this question. And I said, how do I explain what happened to grade six students? And I think I got it, which is, it's your right to spend your money as you see fit. It is not your right to pretend that you never were going to spend the money on something you already agreed to spend the money on, um, which is essentially what happened. Um, and you know that was extraordinarily frustrating. What was more frustrating about that, and I know sometimes I get in trouble when I say stuff like this, but I tell it like it is. What was even more frustrating about that whole situation was the tone with which this city was treated by the federal government. To this day, I have to speak to a member of parliament from Calgary in an official capacity about what happened there. And what the members of parliament were saying to the media, this program doesn't fund recreation infrastructure. It was never our intent to fund 
infrastructure was, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, mm, mm. Oh yeah, a lie. <laughs> Um, which is extraordinarily frustrating. You know, we spent three years in a process with the federal government taking their hand in glove to develop this. We spent $3 million of city taxpayer money. That's $3 million that could have gone to new artificial turf fields. It could have gone to fixing the roof at swimming pools and ice rinks um, because they asked us to, because they asked us to come down this road with them. And if at the end of the day, the cabinet wanted to overrule the unanimous decision of their supposedly arm's length agency, that's okay, that's their prerogative. But to say that the documents that were tabled in Parliament that are still on our website, that clearly say that this program is meant to fund recreational facilities, never existed. That this program was never to fund recreational facilities is frankly a bit rich. Um, but that said, it is what it is. And we've got to figure out how to move forward. And so I am absolutely committed, as are all of my council, all of my colleagues on city council, we're going to get those four rec centers built. We're going to find the money. Uh, and we're going to move forward on that. The people of southeast and northwest Calgary need them. And particularly when I was at the opening of the Genesis Center, I realized how important those kinds of facilities are to the community. Maybe they won't be as big as we had hoped or dreamed. Maybe they won't be quite as lavish, but we're going to get them built. And I hope that we will be able to announce to you over the course of the next two months just how that will happen. And hopefully we will not have lost too much time. So this is deeply disappointing, but we have to be able to move forward. So in addition to those rec centers, which include, by the way, three new branches for the Calgary Public Library, uh, we will also com we have committed to funding and getting built a new central library in DV East Village, which I'm also very excited about. It will revitalize that neighborhood. It will be a showpiece for the city, but most important, it'll be... You know, people often say to me, sometimes, people who don't go to libraries, What's the purpose of a library in this digital age? Why do we need them? We don't need a dusty old place with books and angry ladies and hair buns and glasses, you know, <laughs> looking at you, telling you to be quiet. And I can quote all kinds of statistics about how library use is up, not down in this modern digital age, how libraries serve an important purpose um, as community members and so on. But I'll just tell you one simple thing. The opening of the Genesis Center was on a Thursday night at 8 p.m. And when I showed up there, I was surprised because they were bringing some people in buses, but there was no way. And so I actually had driven because I'd come from another meeting and I parked at the very, very, very end of the lot. And when I walked in, I realized that the reason there was no parking is because even though they were having their VIP opening, they deliberately chose to leave the facility open not to close it for the VIPs. Thursday night at 8 o'clock, the place had been open for a week. It was packed. There wasn't a single cardio machine available uh, on the YMCA floor. The soccer turf, the indoor soccer fields were full. The gym was kids playing indoor basketball, and most important, the library was completely full. Kids doing their homework. Um, getting books out, people with their laptops um, being in there. And I thought, 17 years it took us to build this place. And look at the demand. It's been open a week. And on a Thursday night at 8 o'clock, it's completely packed. And that tells us about how we need to continue to build these things and need to continue to provide these services to Calgarians. And finally, I'm committed to continue to work with the province to reach an agreement. I'm so scared of saying this, Mayors. I've been saying it for 45 years. <laughs> To get the Southwestern Road built. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, that last one is a little bit out of our hands. Um, it does require the province and the Sutina to make uh, an agreement. But, as Mayor has been saying for the last 45 years, we're really close. <laughs> I fundamentally believe that there is a win solution here. A win for the economic development needs of the people on the Sutina Nation, a win for the province that is interested in good um, and convenient transportation infrastructure, and absolutely a win for the people of Calgary, particularly the people of Southwest Calgary, who have been neglected for so very long. So let's see how that goes. But this year, I think, will be a, a pivotal year. Finally, fourth and finally, the most important thing that 
we will be doing over the next year is perhaps the one that sounds the most boring. And that is, this is the year for the City of Calgary to work with the provincial government, whomever that may be after the election this spring, to make sure that we change the rules of how financing and funding works, to make sure we change the rules of how the city's governance model works. We need to make sure that the city has the financial and governance tools in order to be able to to work and do the work that we need. I have so many examples of just the ridiculous things that I've run into in my tenure in, in only 14 months about this. I'll give you just one which is many of you heard about this situation in Bowness with a leak at a gas station, Gas Plus, uh, and the need to fix it. Here's the thing. We need to fix it. And the city of Calgary fully understands what needs to be done. And we have the expertise to be able to do it. And we're not allowed to. Only Alberta Environment, which is short-staffed and does not have the ability to make that change here in the city, has the ability to actually do it. So what do I say to the residents of Bowness? I'm sorry, you've been kicked out of your house, there's a potential significant health risk here, and I can't help you because I don't have a piece of paper from the provincial government that gives me the ability to actually help you. It's a ridiculous situation. You know, I'm the mayor of a city that has more people in it than five provinces, depending on how well the Winnipeg Jets, the Winnipeg Jets do at uh, economic revitalization. <laughs> By the end of this decade, um, by the end of this decade, Calgary will likely have more people than six provinces. And yet, we're hamstrung. Our hands are tied in this way, in terms of delivering the services that our citizens need. The good news is, I have spoken with the with the lead, every provincial party, and they all get it. They all understand the need for a new framework that will cover off the city of Calgary. So I'm going to be very active in the political election to come, as I know my colleagues on council are going to be, to make sure that issues facing the city are front and center. I encourage all of you to make sure that you're talking to your uh, MLAs and your candidates about the same thing. We have to make sure that municipal issues are absolutely front and center in the election that's coming, and we're going to look forward to doing that as well. So, I said I was going to give you homework. You ready for the homework? An old professor always has homework. I want to tell you about a wonderful program that was designed by volunteers working with my office. And that is the program called Three Things for Calgary. It's very, very simple. I'm encouraging all Calgarians over the course of this beautiful, wonderful winter to do three things for them. They could be big things. Take on a leadership role in this Rotary Club. See you, Ronesh? Um, join your local community association. They could be small things. My single favorite example is the guy who told me, I'm going to have a barbecue, but I'm going to have it in my front yard instead of my backyard. And I'm going to invite all the neighbors that I don't really know. These are all the things that really make a difference. My leadership philosophy is very straightforward. And that philosophy is to give the work back to the people. It's not just the job of the mayor or Alderman Lowe or Alderman Putmans to make this city better. It's the job of every single one of us to take our own hands, our own hearts, our own minds to the work of making life better for our neighbors. And that's really all the three things it's about. Now, I've been a politician for all of 14 months now, and I have, in fact, uh, learned one thing. Um, so I actually lied. Um, there's actually four things. Because the fourth thing, once you've done your three things, is simply to tell three other people and to get three other people to do three things. And there are fun online ways to do it. You can go on Facebook, you can go on the website, share your stories, ask for advice on how to make change. But really, that's what it is. So now, I'm going to give you all a buy. As members of this particular Rotary Club, you're already doing so much for the community. So that's one. <laughs> you got two to go. Um, and I encourage all of you to think hard about how we do that. Uh, my chief of staff was at Sinalta School this morning talking to a bunch of elementary students about three things for Calgary. And I said, what, what did they say? <laughs> what were their three things? And he said, well, things like, I'm going to help mom and dad around the house. I'm going to pick up the trash. I'm going to invite that new kid over to my house. So he can make some friends. It doesn't really matter that every one of us has the power to do these things and to make change. By the way, they asked uh, Chima, my chief of staff, at this event what his three things for Calgary were. And as I recall, one of them was he was going to wrap up his volunteer work. Number two was he was going to shovel the sidewalk of his neighbor who's a senior. Um, but number three, I don't actually believe. Because he said number three was, I'm going to be nicer to the mayor. <laughs> 
he snuck out already, so I can't even make fun of him about that. Oh, there you are. Yeah, all right. <laughs> So how's that being nicer to the mayor thing coming for you? <laughs> 2012 is going to be amazing, folks. It's going to be amazing. It is going to be a year where we do so much for Calgary, but even more important, where we have the ability to make long-term plans with an end goal towards that, and it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth every minute of it, and we are going to have a great time along the way so that some future mayor will be standing here a hundred years hence and asking that same question. What were the people in 2012 thinking that they were building this community that we still enjoy? So let's get to work. Thank you. I've gone on way too long, but I'll still take a question or two. Thank you.